I hope you are enjoying this profession. Sir, very much to this this extent that uh, many job offers have already come, but I have never thought of joining anywhere. Never. Yeah, it's your business. It's your money. Is your thinking? Is it's your dream? So everything belongs to you. And I guess it's an open world. You can think of any problem yeah. to solve. So, And that's why the government of India is now emphasizing that the students must be channelized in this direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of the cases means still means when we were there at our uh, childhood level also. So at that time, always we thought that we will work under somebody. Somebody will be my boss. A good job. <laughs> good job and a good boss, and uh, we will work under uh, under a person like. So that was our dream, like. Yes. And yes. this kind of culture was also not there. Nobody okay. thought or nobody uh, spoke about that startup, innovation, incubation. These words was yeah, not yeah, in the dictionary yeah. also. But my parents still freak out. They still don't understand what I do. <laughs> and they still don't understand how I earn. I, I don't know that. What about the prompting also? That I think the same situation is the same. Parents do not understand this business. <laughs> Am I they always say you are not doing any job. You are jobless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I audible, now, sir? Yeah, you are audible. You are audible right now. You are audible. Sir, we have uh, broken up this uh, one and a half hours in something like this in the first forty-five minutes. Uh, Prantik will uh, speak about the uh, briefs about an entrepreneurship journey and what he has already enco uh, encountered. And he'll give an introduction to the business model canvas. Uh, moving forward, I'll take over the business model canvas, though we'll give a brief of it because a detailed business model canvas can go up to one day, two day. Yeah. Day. So we'll give a brief. And if people feel uh, that they are... Um, kind of, um, you know, more interested. Yeah. We'll so one, our objective is only to create the interest among the students. Yeah. It's not like that. We will give a particular uh, problem to them and they will solve it. But at least they will, uh, they will understand that this is also a process. Yes, yes, yes. So both of you under this lockdown condition is restricted in home only or no, you are attending your uh, business activities? Um, so we are uh, doing both. We are traveling in different cities. Okay. And I am uh, actually opening my factory, sir, in Srijan. Uh, okay. Uh, thrice a week. Thrice a week. Okay. So you have you have started full fledged activity in the that, that complex, industrial yes, complex. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Good.
student had their uh, end semester examinations and only today uh, their written examination is over oh. and uh, means their bye bye examinations and their uh, project examination then six semesters and eight semesters uh, that um, grand viva so they have to appear within next 3 uh, 4 days <laughs> so i i would doubt that how many students will be there today uh, because we don't have any other options because uh, uh, this is the calendar activity uh, provided by uh, ministry of educations innovation cell okay so at, and now the examinations is going on in different locations at different time frame so maybe if, uh, our examination it has been collided with this activity but we don't have any other options but to continue with this activity ours from our side yeah so i just wanted to ask one institute innovation council exists only in shipur or is it a central no it is a it is a kind of all india so every <clears throat> uh every higher education and institution okay so they have iic okay they have an iic and this iic is basically is controlled by ministry of education as well as eict so for the edu eict educational institutions they have their iic and we are under ministry of education we also have iic so each and every nit they have iic and basically this is the culture that the government uh, wants to inculcate this particular culture yeah i guess it's very much necessary yeah it is it, it will take some uh, time because uh, uh, means uh, getting interest into this kind of activity uh, initially the the student community will they will think it is a risky one so yeah. unless and until they see through their eyes the interest It yeah is because i have experienced this in the last 10 years i started off in 2011 12 and it has been a very rough journey it has been just recently that we have gathered some experience uh, got into some newspapers products are getting into the market people are praising us but before that 10 hours has been a horrible nightmare journey but once you get the taste of it taste it's like it's like falling in love for the first time you won't like anything else right in your wildest dreams you will not think of anything else so it will happen it will happen don't worry sir no we should not depend upon others being engineers also each and every one has the capability yes. uh, to build a way organizations like okay and that is the beauty of the students and they are the cream students okay so if they are unable to do it then who will do it yeah because in any case we have to fight at least they have a merit they have a brain the only thing is you have to fight you know we have to and we are finding a lot of people yeah. and uh, from there we understand that uh, this is not the money only okay so money start out of incubation innovation is a passion yes yes this is is a kind of passion definitely it's require money but uh, even somebody if somebody doesn't have the money then there are other ways are there to survive in the market and like money is a tool uh, yeah money is a tool yeah if you have a dream and if you have a uh, means uh, concept the idea people are there to purchase your dream absolutely so money is not at all a problem sometimes we just think about the money and we find some sort of escape route that we do not have the money then how i will have a business how will i gather so much of money for yeah. drawers and drawers no i i i i see from the very uh, very beginning and very at the very front the condition of prantik i know each and every conditions of prantik that like, uh, each and every day of prantik i know i know so i have heard a lot about you from him <laughs> so if he can sur survive and he can if he can succeed okay uh, then i i have the hope that Uh, if somebody has a dream and passion and interest okay then nothing can restrict that pillow yes absolutely thank you sir thank you sir 
should we you let us know when we should start yeah i think we should wait for another 2 3 minutes sure uh, i know that uh, this time the students will be less because of their examinations but it will be in a recorded form it will be and uh, i hope that only the students those who are interested who will, they will be present over here so unnecessarily not to make a big crowd okay not interested people also join uh, that, uh, because we are finding that each and every programs like that those who are interested they uh, they uh, means join from the very beginning and then they stay up to the end like right our objective is even if we can uh, uh, inspire a student a single student that will be also good for us yes absolutely thanks see you Chitralekha, I think we should start right now. Okay, sir. Should we start? Yeah, it's already we we are late by five minutes. Okay, sir. Okay. So, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am Chitralekha Datta. So, in today's fast-forwarded world, a lot of us come across variety of ideas now and then, and in this, a major step is giving a shape to those ideas and making a business model out of it. So, to get started, it's really important to develop a clear view of our value propositions, operations, customers, and finances, and the business model canvas provides you the path to that. Today, we are all gathered here to know the steps in building a good business model. and we have our esteemed speakers mr prantik sinha co-founder of agastya boyant private limited and mr bikesh mukherjee founding member of a fresh technology solutions private limited we welcome you sir and now i'll request uh, professor subhashish bhomik sir uh, dean research and uh, sorry sir uh, president of I institution innovation council to inaugurate today's session Hello, I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. So, I, on behalf of Institutions Innovation Council, IIST Shippur, welcome you all in today's webinar. on business model canvas a very good evening to all of you for the last couple of months we are organizing similar events regularly to systematically foster the culture of innovation incubation entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem in this institute iic is envisioned to network individuals expertise and the resources to encourage inspire and nurture the innovative ideas of the young students and transforms their thoughts into working model and possibly 
for the startup. This is an ecosystem which we are trying to build in this institute so that the students can learn to work towards the product building, which seems to be an imperative from an economical point of view and also culminations of all the skills which are required for one who aspires to be an entrepreneur. We are all getting all kinds of supports from our Honorable Director, Professor Partha Sharati Chakravarti for carrying out innovation and entrepreneur related activities in this institute. The business model canvas is basically a strategic, a strategic management template. And this is used for developing the new business models and documenting the existing models also. So a business model describes the rationals of how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value in economic, social, cultural, and the other context. So the process of business model constructions and modifications is also called the business model innovation and forms a part of business strategy. The business model canvas, this basically it offers a chart, a visual chart with elements describing the forms of the producer's value propositions, infrastructures, customers, and the finances. It is assisting the business to align their activities by illustrating potential trade-off. Today, we have with us two young very young alumni of this institute, Mr. Pantik Sina of Agastha Bynes and Mr. Diptesh Mukherjee of Messrs. Affairs Technology Solutions, who will share with us their journey as an entrepreneur and how to prepare the business model canvas for a startup. And this will definitely, it will foster a sense of confidence and ability among the students to meet the future challenges. I'm sure all of us will be benefited from today's deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your speech. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir, for your speech. May I now take the opportunity to introduce our first guest speaker for today, Mr. Prantik Sinha. Mr. Prantik Sinha, co-founder of Augusta Boyne and Augusta Invention, is an alumnus of this institute from the Department of Aerospace Engineering and Applied Mechanics. He was responsible for the design and implementation of underwater lift bag for the Indian Army and has also brought several changes, technical changes in the working of advertisement sky balloons. Mr. Sinha has been associated with the startup culture for over six years in consultancy and lead business development and his area 
of expertise are agriculture, environment, water, and energy. I am quite elated to inform the audience that Mr. Pranthik Sena has been the constant guide and mentor to five final year under electrical undergraduate students who were declared among the top 127 finalists out of 33,000 plus teams across the nation in National Innovation Contest 2020 organized by Innovation Cell, Ministry of Education, Government of India. Over to you, sir. Thank you for this nice introduction. Uh, so before starting, I just want to present my slide. One second. You are able to see my slide, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, as sir rightly said that uh, entrepreneurship and all these development goals that we have is a new buzzword. So, the thing is, I just introduce, I'm introducing myself. My name is Prantik Sina and uh, I'm the co-founder of Agastya Point and Agastya Invention. So, I I belong to a very middle class Bengali family and uh, the journey of my start, actually my startup journey can be anyone's startup journey. It's not that I belong to, I am from Harvard or Stanford or something like that. I belong to your college and I was a very mediocre student. I'm, I was not so much, you know, like uh, uh, first, uh, second or third, I'm a very mediocre student. So, but the thing that, uh, that one point that uh, you know, gave me the spirit of doing entrepreneurship was solving problem skills. So this skill, solving problem skill is probably one of the major, uh, you know, like uh, major skills that has to be in, a, in an entrepreneur's dream, that how to solve problem, uh, where to find problems, because problems, India is a land of problems. And, uh, and we have huge amount of solutions, means a problem can have 100 number of solutions. Within that hundred number of solutions, probably five solutions can be profitable. Five solutions can be scalable. Uh, five solutions can turn up into an NGO or a you know like no profit, no loss model, and uh, you know like and and some problem solving can be you know like philanthropic. You are just just like a hobby kind of thing. You are solving a problem just out of your passion. So out of this, you know, but you need to have a problem solving skill. Any type of problem, maybe it in your home, maybe it, maybe it in your college canteen, maybe it in your hostel, maybe it in your you know in your, your own university. So with that, you know, when I started my journey in the year 2014, when I passed out from uh, Shibpur B College, so what I had, I had one project which I did uh, in Indian Army, and uh, so when I when I was able to solve a problem for Indian Army, I thought, okay, I could do something with my own talent, with my with, with the guidance of the professors, with my team members, I could do something for the country. So that that was a point which I you know which triggered me that okay, I have probably something to do for the nation. So that was the first thing. I didn't know anything about startup six years, six years back. So what we thought my team members, what we thought is that let's open a company and let's start. For one year, I couldn't say to my dad or my mother that I have opened a company. I just told them, okay, I'm preparing for PhD after doing my master's. So that one year I took in my hand to form the company or to think about my future. What should I do? Should I do my PhD or should I do my startup thing? But ultimately what happened, uh, I could, you know, like um, uh, I got an opportunity uh, uh, in the Indian television in, in a Bengali reality show known as Egiye Bangla. Uh, the, the main trigger factor was to join the uh, show was to meet Saurav Ganguly. I'm a huge fan of him. So I just went to Egye Bangla to meet Saurav Ganguly and that was it. So Egye Bangla was a platform for entrepreneurs, for a Bengali entrepreneurs, so that, you know, like they could do something uh, good in their business. So there I could see a whole lot of startups then could understood what is a pitch deck, what is a business model canvas, we were being mentored by IAM Calcutta Innovation Park. So when I 
when 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 i when i was in the boot camp when i was doing those uh, classes by i am professors and all over the world uh, the entrepreneurs were coming from paytm from big basket and all those then i could see okay so this is what we known as startup okay fine then i was uh, you know imbibing those Uh, virtues, or you know, what the entrepreneur should have, how they should talk, how they should be groomed, or something like that. Then gradually we floated our ideas, and then, then, then in the in the long run, uh, subsequently we became one of the top three finalists of AGA Bangla. Then we got incubated in I am Calcutta Innovation Park. Then when uh, when I was telecasted in the television, then. Uh, my parents were you know astonished they thought okay what have you been doing these days and so man uh, i told him mother and father that i want to do this startup now what happens in a bengali culture if you can overcome the family barrier that uh, okay the family is uh, supporting you then you probably have won 60% of the battle when you when you are at the starting phase and when my parents have seen me in front of saurav ganguly uh, sanjeev goink and all those people they felt okay my idea have something because they have recognized it so that's the first step which i which i took then there were many award shows there were many uh, programs and many uh, in- interviews that happened which gave me a brand value to the company and also myself but that was a that was a you know a real life R W E L. That was a show reel kind of thing. That's a television uh, show. But when I started my actual journey, it was completely a different ball game. You don't have orders. You don't have money. You don't know what to do. Your team mem- your team members ask for salary. Your team members uh, don't know what or why to be with you because. probably you don't have orders and you can't motivate them because sometimes what happen you are not uh, you are yourself not motivated at some time because huge number of problems comes along you uh, comes along with you so so that point of time from 2016 to 2018 was a huge huge mental you know like blogging that we we used to do every day brainstorming together that how to survive this company from where we'll get money how much money should i ask for my father how much money should i ask for my friends and all those things were happening all together so because we were a hardcore manufacturing company and a hardcore manufacturing company needs a machine needs raw materials probably you get a one one piece of balloon order but you have to procure raw materials for 10 balloons with one balloon costing or you know like profit also you don't uh, have a huge amount of money to buy the uh, material for 10 balloons so in those things we are stuck but gradually gradually you know like keeping our patience uh, keeping our mind cool and all that thing we started off a journey day by day but the best thing but the one thing that i should teach you guys who are my juniors that it should feel you may be you know devastated in your heart or inside you may be devastated but to the customers but to your team members you have to show that it is a cake walk for you you have to show your smile you have to show that yes you don't fear and you have to show them that i am there why to fear so yes uh, so gradually so so that's the starting for, uh, that was the starting of my career that how i started my journey and uh, if you see that we have been got funded by gita from tifac from imcip from dsp and gas germany and gradually we came to a revenue of 6 crores in the 6 years so thanks to my team uh, probably i am not the only one who have done that but yes my team members have done a great job uh, in supporting me and my, and the company uh, so these are the products broadly of agastya point as i said as uh, you know like they said that we are um, uh, uh, why we are into controlling water pollution so what we do is we make manufacture trash booms and oil booms to restrict the flow of trash and oil on the waters uh, we make biogas balloons to store biogas it's a flexible biogas storage tanks that that can be transported portable folded and you know hanged anywhere to reduce the space so we make different kinds of product we make this uh, cylindrical balloons we make this fish tanks we make helikite we make blimp 
we make double membrane biogas storage balloons we make flood barriers during this uh, flood events where where these are happening natural calamities we make flood barriers while replacing the uh, sandbags we are doing aquaponics in various sectors where uh, where there is no soil or there is no field but for the urban people we are setting up aquaponic structures uh, it's a soilless culture where you you uh, artificially put uh, the nitrogen phosphorus potassium npk ratio and you just grow your plants this is the whole aquaculture field we do uh, pan india we install tanks and also we do some kind of seedling production in small small ponds these are the uh, these are the whole lot of you know tanks that we install pan india if you see next we come this avran the, the this lockdown we have all seen the previous lockdown so my next speaker mr diptesh mukherjee will uh, he is from iit bombay so he is my school friend and uh, we have all seen together grow up and all that thing and he is also from the same college iit shipport so what we saw that okay let's do something because we are just sitting idle because first lockdown we don't know what to do it was the first lockdown in our career so uh, we thought of making something because he was into nanotechnology we have also an in inventor from iit delhi in nanotechnology so diptes the started and we got funding from uh, dst that okay uh, one second my battery okay fine so we got funding from dst you know like uh, around 1 cr from dst for for making this out when we pitched our idea within this lockdown this is the first time probably in a lockdown probably no startup has ever done the three startups combined together i looked into the production uh, manufacturing setup uh, consulting with the clients consulting with the vendors making it streamlined by sitting at home because we couldn't move so this probably is of one of the case study we can have in in future that how three startups combined collaborated together not competing with each other but rather collaborating with each other and making out a product avran and this avran is going good uh, in this lockdown probably you know like when other products are not working this avran has helped us to survive uh, because of, of of the funds that we received and yes it's a great going product and this company is going big we are also going for funding for this company we are also coming out with a antimicrobial packaging solutions where the foods where any other you know like consumable items perishable items can be stored for a longer time and they they won't be damaged yes so this is about our company and what we do now when because our today's uh, discussion is on business model canvas dipesda will say a detail about it but just to give you an idea when you start your business first you need to have a idea you need to have a idea that what you are going to do so before you do anything just remember three c's of bmc business model canvas one is business model and canvas first is create you create a value means you create an idea you have an idea how big is your idea is your idea scalable is your idea you know uh, will 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 the customers buy your idea forget about your product you just say your idea to to the people you meet probably to your father probably to your uncle probably to your sister probably to your brother anybody say about your idea are they fascinated about your idea see that then convey now this convey probably it's a one word but it has nine points there are nine points of bmcs it is the will say in detail but convey your idea in nine points and make it as you know like business it has to be in a in a form of art as it a canvas you know you have to draw your idea so drawing of idea has some steps so there are nine steps for that when you float your idea through this canvas then you should have a feedback because a business can't be open loop that you get orders you manufacture you supply to the client that's not business that's probably a manufacturing trading or something like that for a startup you need to have a feedback from your customer so capture the value that you create you capture from the customers that okay what 
uh, feedback the client is giving, what feedback the vendor is giving, what feedback the business is giving, the business is doing good. Am I able to maintain a relationship with my customers or something like that? So yes, so this is BMC, the three C's of BMC. I think uh, over to you, Ditesda. You please continue from here. Yeah. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, it feels very nice to come back to my alma mater after a long 12 years. I guess it's one yug. It has been a long 12 years and uh, it has been a pretty exciting journey. And uh, when I was there in IIST Shibpur, uh, though I had always been a very good student, I had never stood second in my uh, school life. But uh, post class 12, um, puberty hit and um, uh, after 18 uh, to a good level we uh, got attracted by many things and I got uh, sliding down the ladder in terms of my results in terms of my education but probably my hunger and thirst towards learning something new uh, increased day by day and my uh, attraction towards any kind of conventional studies decreased day by day. As a result, I was not able to concentrate much on studies. Um, but I used to uh, go through a lot of things that were happening around the world. Uh, it was th in third year when Flipkart was launched in around 2007-8, when the word entrepreneurship sounded very uh, different, something uh, which you could do for yourself and something you could express your desire, express your value to the whole of the world. The whole world is an open chain in front of you. But to realize that dream, it took me close to 10 years of struggle. I got uh, I, I got my graduation from IST Shippur and I went to IIT Bombay for the sole reason that I wanted to pursue entrepreneurship as a career. Though uh, I went into the ecosystem, learned about it. And the first company that I started in 2011, 12 was a technology-based consulting company. Had multiple projects with uh, the defense, the army, as well as uh, multiple projects with ECCI and uh, a lot of clients from inside India and outside India. And what I learned is that you make something, you manufacture it, you sell it. It might be a software, it might be a machine, it might be a something of sort of a solution. While cradling down the journey, what I learned is there is a structure which always existed from the time of Jeff Bezos, from the time of Steve Jobs, from the time of um, Paul Allen, uh, but we didn't know about it. What we knew was we had to do something, a business, we don't have money, we don't have resources, but we need to do it. Things were available everywhere. We started relooking at all the opportunities, we started relooking at our mistakes. And in spite of, as Pranthik told, nightmare journeys where, uh, you know, during the struggling period, a good amount of time goes to make your mom and dad, your parents, your loved ones comfortable, and yet keep focused on your journey that I need to reach here. I'm not going to go sidetrack. I'm going to get slapped 100 times, 1,000 times, but I'm going to rise back and give it one more try, one more try. Every night you would feel like, that's it, I'm gonna leave it. But then again, you feel, okay, tomorrow, let me give it one more try. This one more try, one more try has driven me from 2011 to 2021. And probably uh, the lockdown had been a mastermind where um, it was a boon, I would say, where for the first time, uh, three startups, uh, uh, some Abhishek Sahagal, a co-founder of mine from IT Delhi, uh, me from IIT Bombay, Pranthik from IST Shippur, we collaborated together. I haven't seen ever, uh, you know, other startups or big companies even collaborating for a Nobel cause. Here, we actually didn't think of profit percentages. We didn't think of anything. We just jumped into it and we thought it was a good product. It could reach to India. So we, com you know, combined our skill sets and uh, started uh, the journey for Avran itself. Avran, by the way, is a long-lasting disinfectant um you know you use sanitizers so uh, it's it's kind of a disinfectant for 
any kind of your cell phone or your um, you know wallet or any kind of a personal belongings if you spray it once it stays disinfected for 15 days so you don't need to sanitize you can you know use it you can put it on your clothes your mask you can wash it and yet this whole um, uh, product works nice and works fine for 15 days so you don't have the hassle for sanitizing every day this product we pitched in front of the Department of Science and Technology. Uh, Sign IIT Bombay had helped us a lot in uh, guiding us uh, how to launch the product, how to go about the minute details, and probably whatever I'm going to tell you about business model canvas is something that was taught to me four or five years back by masterpiece professors, master people uh, from uh, Singapore, USA, from colleges like Harvard, uh, Stanford, from colleges like uh, NUS, and at that point of time, I didn't find a lot of interest. I did find interest, but not to a huge extent. But as we moved down the experience lane, we understood that that three C's that Pramdik talked about, you know, the first uh, C is like, you know, business model canvas. Business is about creating a value for solving a big problem. Model, why do you require a model? You require a model because you kind of uh, have to deliver or convey the second C, that value to your customers. Now, this would have completed a business. Why would it require a canvas? Why would you require to capture it, capture that value? Because unless you understand every nook and corner of business, business is not about making something, selling something and earn money. Business is about it's like running a family. Business is about maintaining the balances of customers, as well as your supply chain network, as well as your logistics network, as well as your manufacturing network, your employees, your stakeholders and investors, your incubators. And this is just 50%. The rest 50% is your family life, your mom and dad, your girlfriend, your wife, your brother, everybody. Because you are being the panic boy of your family. And every day, your parents are this close to heart attacks. And you have to convince them every day. You have to move on. So with this, I'll start off some technicalities of business model canvas. And don't think it to be a very serious something. Try to visualize it. If required, we'll take on more sessions offline or online. And I'm pretty sure to me, after these 10, 11 years of a learning journey, uh, startup has become my way of life. I don't do start startup for money. In fact, uh, people who have done their MBAs from IIMs or graduated from IITs earn way more than me. But this is a journey which you feel completes you. Given another life, I would again like to be born as an entrepreneur. So that's the completeness. That's the satisfaction of uh, being an entrepreneur, struggling, failing, and yet moving towards your goal. So with that, I'll start off uh, a presentation. I hope all of you guys will find it interesting. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. So oh, this whole business model canvas is like a blueprinting. We all have seen films, right? Cinema, film. So when you start doing a film, you need to write a script. You need to talk to the actors. You need to convince the producer. You need to write screenplay. You need to write, you have seen all these names in the credits of films, right? So you need to write the screenplay. You need to write uh, the dialogues. You need to, um, you need to go for locations, finalize that, look at production, shoot for it, then do a PR for it, release it, earn money. It's a huge amount of task. A startup is not very dissimilar from making a film with the entrepreneur being the director of that film or the filmmaker. If you're a filmmaker, you might not know about the best about photography. You might not know the best about acting. You might not know the best about editing. You might not know the best about production, but you have to be a jack of all trades. That's the crux of it. As an entrepreneur, 
just imagine of any company, imagine of a company that we all know about, Tata Steel. Eventually, it was my first company. I couldn't join it. Tata Steel is a massive giant. It has got a production center. It has got a PR agency. It has got a, a supply chain network. It has got distribution network. It has got its R&D department. It has got its um, logistics. It has got its marketing strategy. With all this under one podium, what you get is a bar of steel at a price that you can afford. Believe me, it's just one line, a bar of steel at a price that you can afford. But the amount of Herculean task that goes behind making this bar of steel at an affordable price is itself an innovation. I can bet anybody of you who goes into the startup journey will feel after two years that if you needed to recreate any of the businesses, even if it is like creating a smartphone or an app or anything, you would you know, scratch your head saying that, oh my God, I would require crores of money to do it. In MNCs, people do have a lot of budget, but when you start off, you have zero, absolute zero. You have no money for yourself. You have no money for starting the company. At that point of time, we need, we sometimes, you know, tend to hustle, but we don't tend to go in a structured manner. But that is a point of time, a structure, a canvas, a model is going to save you from any kind of uh, losses, any kind of noise in the business and help you smoothly and monotonically grow on. I am Diptesh Mukherjee the co-founder and CEO of Abstract Ideas. Abstract Ideas, by the way, is registered as a fresh technology solutions private limited, and we operate under the brand name Abstract Ideas. I graduated from Shipper, as you can see, um, worked with Whirlpool Corporation uh, for futuristic refrigeration process, and also along with NASA in US, and I have 20 patents granted, co-founded startups on robotics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology. The debut product had uh, fetched, Avran, as I told you, had fetched the Alexander Graham Bell Award or the Aegis Graham Bell Award and the Chanelier FMCG Award for the best product launch of the year 2020. We had won the uh, Startup International Conference at Taiwan in 2018. Last year, during lockdown, uh, our effort was recognized by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India who had declared as one of the winners for the best COVID-19 innovations in 2020 for Avran. This has been my journey so far. Now, I had given a brief about why you require a business model or a business model canvas. And as I told you, you require a business to create a value. You require a model to convey and deliver the value. And you need the canvas for capturing the value so that you have everything in control and you have the value getting delivered into the value chain network continuously, uninterruptedly, and seamlessly. Now, you might all ask, we do business, why do you talk so much and why do you have to give so much of lectures? But believe me, 90% of your ideas will never translate into business. Never, never, and never. Why? Because idea is not even 0.00001% of the business or not even 0.1% of the whole value that you want to deliver. Idea is just an idea. Two people might think that it's a good one. Five people might think it's a good one, but your city might think, the whole of Calcutta might think that it's a good idea because it's a, it solves a problem of Calcutta. But is the whole world thinking about that idea? Is your idea so big? Number one, can you deliver this idea with full professionalism, with full conviction, with a process, with a kind of value which satisfied everybody in that business? You alone cannot do anything. You need a team. You need a team from finance. You need a team from operations. You need a team from supply chain management. You need a team from marketing, branding, 
and uh, uh, everything that understands his customer psychology and tries to penetrate your product into the customer for their benevolence. Even if you go past this, come on, you get a funding of one CR, two CR, three CR. I can name you hundreds of companies which have been into the billion dollar club. I hope you guys all remember a company called Shop Clues. In 2016, we used to buy a lot of our daily essentials, um, you know, uh, a lot of things, a lot of things like Amazon from Shop Clues because it had one of the most attractive discounts. Today in 2021, Shop Clues is reduced to nothing. I can tell a number of companies who have gone through a good exit, entrepreneurs have made money and, uh, you know, people, uh, investors have made money, but I can name you 99% more incidents where startups have not been able to do anything in spite of they had the great product, a great product, a great idea. You had money. We feel that we don't have money and, and that's the reason uh, we cannot start a business, we cannot run a business. But believe me, even after getting 20 CR, 50 CR, you feel you can do business, people have got 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 CR in funding. Still, they had collapsed. Money will help you run for a certain time, not beyond that. So unless you're in a structure, unless you're in an mode of inner salvation for doing business, unless you feel that money is just a tool, I have to use it. It, it can have hundreds of zeros behind that one. That doesn't make you rich. You are the poorest guy as the CEO of the company, and you are just using that money for the benevolence of every stakeholder of the business. So VC funds cannot save you. And product is not equal to business. I believe most of the people who are listening to uh, the stock out here are engineers because most engineers in our country tend to turn out into entrepreneurs. The first thing, please get out. Get, I mean, I took around eight years to learn this. I hope my little friends should not uh, take so much. And believe me blindly, your product does not mean your business. Google had made a great product, but Everybody knows that people before Google had made similar product. Google got out because they could deliver that product. They could capture that product. Most of us, mostly engineers, we tend to make a great product, um, a patentable product, some good uh, newspaper covers and everything. And we think, okay, if you make this product, if you manufacture this, customers are going to take it because this is the diehard need of the customer. But when you get into the market, you see, okay, it's probably a nice to have product. I'm not able to sell because it's not a must have product. It's not something that customers are dying to buy. But I thought so, I thought so. Then why is it not happening? It is at that point of time you feel that something has gone wrong. Your product was not wrong. Your product was absolutely right. But the fact that you made in your mind that product is equal to business is going to bring down and bring you down into a fathom of failure. So be smart and learn the art of translating an idea into a business. Business model canvas is that art. Now business model, it was, I won't say invented, but it was first put forward uh, by this uh, smart gentleman who was a PhD scholar at that point of time, Alex Osterweiler. He's uh, uh, one of the best-selling authors of Business Model Generation. Uh, if you guys ever get time, uh, please go through the book at one point or the other. If you want to be entrepreneurs, this is going to be one of the Bibles, one of the Gitas, or one of the Qurans in your hand, which you would like to read like a storybook. Now this list of squares that you see in front of you is what we call as the business model canvas. This has been modified day after day, year after year, because the meaning of business in 1970s, as far as I remember in 1980s has changed. 90s had brought in a new kind of business and the era of dot-com bubble 
have completely replaced the concept of business. The invention of smartphone and its commercialization by Steve Jobs have revolutionized the way business can be done. Today, if we are able to uh, you know, pull forward a business like Avran sitting at our home or taking precautions, getting onto the streets, it's because this little monster called smartphone is there. Laptops are there. So today, business means ecosystem. Today, business means integration. Today, business means solution. It does not mean a product. There was a time Bill Gates made Microsoft Office and got away with it. Today, just a Microsoft Office will not be able to survive unless, I guess, Microsoft has already done this for the last 10 years, unless it creates an ecosystem. You should be able to feel yourself as a part of that universe. A startup, a business is an universe within itself. So when we start off a business model canvas, what we are going to do is we are going to run through each of this, you know, things that are written out there. You might be wandering around while seeing this uh, slides that what the hell have they written? They're like customer segments, customer relationships, key activities, key partners, cost structures. There is a way to look into this chronologically. So when you start the business, you first identify that there is a problem. You have a solution. You have made a product. Now you are getting into business. So it's time to make a chart for you about how you're going to deliver it, how you're going to capture it. The first point that comes into factor is customer segments. Who are you selling to? Who are your customers? Example, Baiju's. We all know about Baiju's, right? Baiju's make educational content online for kids. Well and fine. Are kids my customers? To some extent, yes. But actually, no. Your customers are the people who are paying for your product. It's the moms and dads of those children who are your customers. If moms and dads are convinced that my baby is going to be the next Isaac Newton, if they are going to go and take, a, take up the lessons from Baiju's, boss, you're on. You're able to sell your product. So you should be able to know what your customer segments are. And as I'm going to move along with the slides, I'm going to give you examples from certain companies who have you know, made it into a billion dollar club, who had made it into one of the uh, stalwart gems of our universe, like Uber, like Flipkart, like Ola. And you'll be able to relate because you know these are names that come into your mind everyday life. And you know what these guys do. You have seen their website. So you'll be able to understand, oh, the Flipkart had done this. Oh, Uber had done that. That's where you're going to relate with all these hotches spots written on the business model canvas. So first, you need to identify who are your customers. Are they a premium segment? Are they a niche segment? Are they the mass market? Then you need to go on to value propositions. If you have the customers, what are the value propositions that you're going to give to your customers? Now, value proposition doesn't mean the features of your product. Say, uh, this, is, this is my cell phone, right? Uh, this cell phone has got XGB memory, X processor of this Qualcomm Snapdragon and this and that with 32 megapixel camera or 138 megapixel camera or whatsoever. I can do whatever I can do with this cell phone Karlo Dunia Mutti Me. But probably the value proposition is Karlo Dunia Mutti Me. This is a device with which you can communicate to anybody with or without call. You can call up and speak to anybody live. You can uh, web search the web. You can complete your everyday, everyday task, including running a business, doing work of your office. And that is a value proposition. What is the benefit to your customers? You might say that it has got uh, one petabyte of uh, you know, memory. Nobody cares as long as they can store all of their camera reels and their photos and videos. 
So value proposition is always how is my customer being benefited from my product? That is your value proposition. Are you solving a real problem? The next one is customer relationships. Most of you entrepreneurs will not be selling a product to a customer and forget it. Ek bar khareeda and ho gaya. You're not the roadside chana vendor. You want your customers to come back to you, to believe in your brand, to live your brand, to dream your brand, to, to spread your brand across the universe. For that, they need to feel that this company, the value proposition, everything is something which I can attach with my heart. That is when they're going to buy your, your product. When we buy Maggie, do we think that it is a Nestle's product? Nestle is a good company. So I'll buy Maggie. Maggie has gone into our head to such an extent that anything we feel like eating, we go for two minutes, cook Maggie. And that first taste of Maggie gives you their value proposition, gives Nestle their success. It's not the money. It's not the fame. It's that first taste of Maggie noodles which makes them billions and billions. <clears throat> the next one is channels. Channels is how are you going to reach? Maggie has got a great business. Mercedes has got a great business. Now Mercedes is sitting out there in Germany. Me sitting out there in Bombay or Bangalore or Calcutta, how would I be able to get that product? You need distribution networks. You need online channels. You need, you know, e-commerce platforms to deliver. You need, even Eureka folks, you have seen people coming to your door to, uh, you know, uh, get a trial for you and then selling the product. So on feet is also there. Once this is done, then you have to think, what are my revenue streams? Now you think as a business, I can get a subscription based revenue. I can get a one-time cost for my product. I can get a commission based revenue. I can get revenue by selling spares. There are numerous avenues of earning revenue. So I'll try to optimize my revenue streams in such a manner that I should have a consolidated revenue from many baskets. You know, you should not put your eggs into one basket. So a different revenue streams, different forms of revenue streams. Next, what are the key activities? If now I have decided, okay, now these are my revenue streams. Now what I need to do for it, I need to do research and development to make the product better. We need to uh, run a production center. We need to run the marketing strategies. We need to look after the brand. We need to look after patents, IPs. We need to look after the roles and responsibilities of all the people or employees. I don't want to call, I don't like calling people employees because uh, they, they are they are the warriors. They are, they are, they are the bosses. I always feel like that. And one, these are the key activities that you need to do. Then key resources. What are the resources you've got? You've got, you need manufacturing resources. You need finance resources. You need marketing resources. You need a lot of them. Moving forward, if you need these resources, who are your partners? Who are your strategic alliances? You need to uh, do an alliance with probably a consulting company, as well as somebody who are going to manufacture for you, somebody who is going to market the product for you, somebody who is uh, going to brand the product for you. You yourself cannot do everything. Like Shah Rukh Khan alone cannot do go and direct the film, act for the film, act as junior artist, act for the music composer, uh, act as the PR agency. He can't do that. He needs a whole team to execute a, a, a project. So startup is similar. And once you have identified your key customer, like key partners, you need to identify that what are your cost structures? You have your OPEX, you have your CAPEX. CAPEX is something that is very, uh, you know, one time. OPEX is something that goes on and on with your operations. So you have to optimize your CAPEX and your OPEX operations so that you achieve unit profitability while delivering your business. With that, I'll move on to each sector of it 
and I'll leave some thoughts to you to think about one of your plans or one of your uh, idle companies who where you can think about what they do and map them onto your business model canvas. Let me remind you, probably nobody is going to uh, assess you, but please, please, please go through it. Uh, sit for a group study. Try to complete a business model canvas. First, the first thing is customer segments. Who are your most important customers? And what kind of client segmentation do you have? Primarily, it has got five types of customers, like the mass market. The next one is a niche market. The next one is a segmented market. The next one is a diversified market. And the fifth one is a multi-sided market. So these markets, all the customers that you see can be actually you know, put into these five baskets, these five kind of market segments. How, what do these five tell you? I'm going to tell you in the next slide. Now, what is a mass market? A mass market is something which everybody buys, probably a safety pin. A safety pin is required by a family, required by an office, required by a hospital, required by a hotel, required by a restaurant, I guess anywhere you go. <clears throat> That's a mass market. You don't distinguish between customers. You sell it to anybody and everybody. It is something that, um, you know, you make for um, age of, uh, you know, 8 to 80 from, for anybody. So that's your mass market. The next one is a niche market. A niche market is probably uh, something like uh, Louis Vuitton. A Louis Vuitton is a uber level fashion market, which is there for certain class of peoples. You won't ever see Louis Vuitton giving a 80% discount and giving you a bracelet or a bag at 150 bucks. They don't want to. It's for a specific niche kind of customers. Next, what comes up is a segmented market. Now here I'm going to give a, an example of Uber. Uber is for everybody. So at least with a certain income level, you can use Uber. But Uber again is a segmented market at the same time because you have Uber Share, you have Uber Go, you have Uber Toto right now, you have Uber Excel, you have Uber for Corp. So within the mass market, you create different SKUs of your product for different segments of your customers. Uber Share is for people who don't want to spend a lot of money and they don't mind sharing your, their cab with somebody else. Uber Go is for a greater uh, you know, segment of the market. Uber Excel for people who like to live a little classy. Uber Corp is for a different segment of customers. Now, again, a diversified market is something where you can go for like Ola or Flipkart, etc. Like Flipkart initially started for books in 2007, if you remember, they used to sell books. Flipkart has diversified into uh, uh, your smartphones, your laptops, your electronic items, your apparels, your fashion requirements, your, um, you know, sunglasses and whatnot. It has diversified the market. The next one is a multi-sided market, a market which has got different phases to it. For example, again, in Uber or in uh, Ola, uh, you have the drivers, you have the riders. Both are customers. Your drivers are also customers. Your riders are also customers. So they form a totality of the market, which is a multi-sided market. Moving on to value proposition. Now you need to get this very straight in your head that what are the problems that my product or service is solving? Now we as entrepreneurs sometimes think that, okay, I have built something. I have myself done hundreds of times, you know, a number of products. I made a fantastic product. I was spellbound at my own invention, but it didn't work out because probably people required it, but not to an extent where we can make a billion dollar business out of it. It didn't work out. 
fine, we learn from it. So at that point of time, we un I understood that we need to solve a problem big, 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 big enough. And what are those problems that we need to solve? And what is a distinct unidentifiable impact, sorry, identifiable impact that my solution will have in the user's life? Most of the points will come under these six buckets. Number one, cost. Xiaomi phones are a classic example of reduction of cost. Risk. If we don't remember, insurance is a product. Insurance is something which value proposes de-risking our lives, de-risking the problem of money in our lives. Status, iPhone, no question at all. Mercedes, BMW, status. Experience, probably Javed Habib's salon at one point of time used to be a user experience where uh, you know uh, we used to be cluttered with roadside salons and we didn't have a Tony and guy every day in our uh, in, in our life for getting a haircut or getting a, a makeover done. The next one is time, something that saves time. A classic, classic, classic example is computer, a product that saves time in doing a lot of calculations and many things. And the next is money. Money saving is probably, again, a very important thing that comes under value proposition. But money comes last. You should think of whether you're saving money for the customers at the end. You should deliver to propose a value which your customers cannot, you know, uh, move away from. It's it's always has to be like, uh, the it's like dating a girl, you know? If you go and you need to uh, ask the girl for another date, you need to make the person understand that you're there for her. You're there for, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm being uh, gender biased, it's a girl or a boy, anything, you can date anybody. So uh, value propositions is that thing which you need to provide to your customer who is like your loved one and he needs to feel or she needs to feel that the problems of my life are relieved. I want to buy this. The next one for say value propositions is about they give you on demand cab rides at your fingertips. I have the cell phone. I have two minutes. I get a cab at my doorstep and they work on all these segments. They work at reducing costs. They work at the risk of not getting cabs. It is a status symbol through some of their product portfolios. It's a great customer experience right from the app to the cab. It saves time of hustling for a cab. It also saves your money. In, so what you can do is if you any of you have an idea, you need to find out what are the problems that you're solving and you need to find out what are the value propositions you're getting in the same line. Don't think of the features, don't think of this GBs and TBs and seconds and minutes and you uh, just think of what core value you're providing to your customers, a language which your granny would understand. Now, on a customer relationships, how do you maintain relationships with your customers? You're a company of 100 employees, 100 workers, 200,000 workers. How would you cater to cross and cross of people residing in California, residing in Birmingham, residing in Adelaide? You're sitting out there in Delhi. How would you reach out to a person in San Diego? So that is where the customer relationship comes up. How would you make the customers engage to your product? It might be self-service, automated, group agents, personal agents, a community, and the most recent co-creation. The last two has been like hotcakes, which is an automated autopilot customer relationships. And this will help growing the customer base after getting and keeping on retaining the customer base. On the customer relationships, if we come to the example of Uber, it is a self-service. You don't need anybody's help. You know, you know how to use WhatsApp. You know how to use Facebook. You know how to use Amazon. You can use Uber. It's not a problem at all. It's automated. You don't need anybody's help. You don't need any distributor's help to book a cab. You don't need to, uh, you know, 
कन्विंस अ पर्सन की दादा कैन यू प्लीज फाइंड अ कैब फॉर मी दादा आई एम नॉट गेटिंग अ कैब टू हेल्प विद इट आई हैव अ सेल फोन अ कैब इज देयर एट माय डोर स्टेप डन it doesn't require a group agent personal agent because it's a you know it is a little resource intensive it has got a community uber is a community in itself there's a driver you talk to the driver you have never seen him before you will never ever see him before after your ride probably but still you feel that you are under an uber community you have an app which welcomes you if it has a cab which has got a you know chauffeur for you it is well cleaned well sanitized it knows where you are going to you don't need to uh, you know tell the driver ki dada where are you taking me uh, I, I, do you, do you want to take me 4 kilometers side track are you charging more out of me no i'm not going to give you so much of money i'll call the police you don't need that it's all standardized it's transparent it's it's absolutely something that you can understand even if you are not that tech savvy and that is why uber has probably become the king of online demand cabs co creation is where you know the drivers the uh, riders the whole community together works for taking uber cab to your doorstep now what is your channel if you want to scale the company you need to know three things i'll not use money i'll not use use resources i'll not make any effort continuously this word is very important and still my business will grow into a billion dollar business i will sit at my home enjoying my evening and my business will make millions at the same day my customers will feel engaged but it should not be dependent on me on every decision now for that what are my channels it might be a web platform like amazon like flipkart it might be a mobile app like you know uber i guess all of the uh, startups have come up with their web platform and mobile app it might be feet on the ground initially you need to go to your customers convince them until they come into your community and with this channels uh, you require to deliver your brand awareness your prop purchase your delivery your after sale support your return you have hell lot of things into the whole chain to take care and that is where your channels come very handy and important to scale up your company now what are your revenue streams <clears throat> how are you going to earn from your customers done you can sell your product you can take a subscription from your customers so your customers might pay you on a monthly subscription basis as we all do for say amazon prime it might be on usage basis like in google ads pay per click it might be a one time sale like your real estate it might be a transaction basis you know like paytm whatever you do as a transaction a percentage goes it might be on a commission basis say for example airbnb when you book an airbnb airbnb takes a 10% commission on the whole booking it might be an advertising fee google charges its b2b customers with an advertising fee and it makes its sites free to the common people to the mass market so we all say google is free but you know 97% of google's revenues come from its advertising fee that's their main channel of revenue their revenue streams it might be asset sales you are selling a product which has got a depreciating value a physical product say like prantik's product the a uh, uh, bioflock tank is an asset when he sells that product he earns by that asset sales out there then outcome based say you i might not charge you you might not give me any money you might not give me a subscription you might not i might not charge you a transaction but when you get a value delivered to your doorstep i earn a small commission out of it so if you have an outcome i'll earn if you don't have an outcome i'm not going to earn i'm going to bear the loss so that's an outcome based uh, business then leasing and renting so if you say like rent or mojo they are buying assets they are buying furnitures they are buying uh, different sorts of water filters or uh, washing machines or refrigerators and they're leasing and renting to you in a structured model 
So that is where you're earning your revenues from and you're leasing and renting. So these, you know, nine sorts of revenue streams are there and you have to decide these are going to be my revenues because your company can be framed in the form of a certain kind of revenue stream. And if you juggle your mind, you can frame your company to form a different kind of revenue stream. As an entrepreneur, as a co-founder, you need to break your brains into what will be less on the pocket of the customers and at the same time be the best for your company's pocket. That is where you're going to emerge as a winner. So when you think of your business or your idea, you need to find out what are your revenue streams. Now don't uh, get a huge number of revenue streams try to stick to two to three sorts of revenue streams so things will be transparent as well as things will be concise and crisp now what are the key activities the key activities that we will be taking up in a, in a company as a, as a co-founder or a ceo is production customer support marketing sales sourcing platform management what is platform management so, you know, Amazon has a web platform, a mobile app platform. Flipkart also has it. Ola has it. Uber has it. Most of the online business have it. But you have no idea what tremendous amount of effort goes on in an utmost urgency level, utmost urgency level on the management of this platform. If this does not happen, believe me, you buy something from Amazon, it will get uh, you know, vanished off in the logistics and none of you will be able to know. It's because of Amazon's platform management, your item is being delivered to your house so easily. It goes on with demand forecasting, demand replenishment, uh, sorry, supply rep inventory replenishment. It has got the logistics. It has got the cost of logistics, uh, delivery, return, replenishment, account reconciliation, many things. So all those key activities has to be taken care of by the team together. Then comes key resources. What are your key resources to run your daily business? You have your office spaces, your IPs, like your you know, patents, publications, your specialized experts. So if we are doing a nanotechnology business out here, we need to have somebody who is an absolute specialist in nanotechnology. You should have specialized softwares. Like Swiggy does not use a Zoho. Swiggy use a specialized software for food delivery at your doorstep. Have you heard of a food delivery generic software? No, Swiggy has a specialized one. You should have hardware infrastructure like the Amazon Web Services, which we can't see. We also you know cloud computing, cloud computing. What is cloud computing? There's a huge amount of hardware Petabytes and petabytes of data, uh, terabytes, petabytes of processing power to get all these calculations. Just remember, you're ordering on Amazon. Billions of customers are ordering from Amazon at the same point of time. Still, everything is running smoothly. You need to have specialized permits, licenses, regulatory compliances, equipments, and a lot of things as resources which will help you in running, maintaining, and capturing the values of a business. Moving on into key partners, we need to take care of a number of stakeholders like your suppliers, vendors, your distribution network, your business partners, your co-founders. In fact, your team is one of your key partner. The first professional field where you need to sell your idea, you need to convince your idea is your team. Without your team, you're nothing. You're nothing. Next is strategic alliances with companies who are expert in that field. You need to have hand holdings of different experts, different companies to build a value out of uh, um, the, the idea that you have. And finally, it comes to a cost structure. What are my fixed costs? Like salaries, rents, licenses. So if we sell one bottle of Avran, still I need to shell out the salary for all the people who are working behind Avran day in and day out. I need to pay the rent of factories. I need to pay the rents uh, for all the people, all the stakeholders in this particular 
uh, initiative, we have also got variable cost, say like the production cost, the utility bills, the raw materials, they go as per your, your, your production, as per your sales. Sometimes you need to buy raw materials, as Prantik was saying, that you might need to be selling one unit of the product, but in the market, your supplier is not going to give you the raw materials for less than one lakh products. So you know, take a risk, buy the material for one lakh products, and then try to sell those one lakh products. So you need to take care of those costs, optimize them, and also need to make a profit out of it so that it runs. People sometimes will not be able to understand the value, but you know, when that one bottle of Avran comes to uh, 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 um, somebody's hand and some of my uh, you know, uh, beloved customers who probably have been staying with their families, their kids, their sons and daughters, but have not encountered COVID in spite of staying with their partners in the same house who has COVID again, that feeling is something which makes me feel that I'm successful as an entrepreneur. That one particular bottle of Avran, so it, it might be cost structures and many things which gets into the profitability in bringing that one sweet, cute smile on the face of that customer. So all these nine points that I talked about will be there in your head, will be there in the business model canvas. And as Prantik told, that on your face, it should show off that this has been a cakewalk. All these calculations will always remain unsung heroes at the back of the screen. But you know that these nine pointers are your Pandavas, your Krishna, your whole Mahabharata when you deliver a business. It would be like Haki ke daat dikhane ka kuch aur, aur chabane ka kuch aur. You also have to remember when you are going for, going for economies of scale, like, you know, right now my costing might be high, but when my bulk sales go, my costing has to reduce. So this is known as economies when you scale up. So as you scale up, your costs come down. That is known as economies of scale and unit economics, like your uh, revenue, your cost of goods sold, your selling general and administrative expenses, your gross profit, your net profit, your EBITDA, your EBITDA margin, your cash flow, everything falls under unit economics and you need to take care of that while building the business model canvas. So now that we know about these uh, different, different sectors of business model canvas, I will leave it on to you. Uh, if you have any questions or you can even, uh, you know, type business model canvas onto Google, get this template and just try to scribble a few lines and I'm sure I'm going to have questions, but if any questions you can, you know, reach out, I'll be more than happy. And if at least one out of thousand people find the same passion on startup and feel that they can change the face of India, we, we tend to, you know, either glorify or either, you know, criticize the government, it may be the central government or state government or this and that, but believe me, it's us who can change the country nobody can if you feel that you can change the country go for it try to do it in a structured manner you might think that it's 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 so uh, unachievable as a dream believe me when i started off my mom dad everybody thought it was an unachievable dream but at the end uh and if it doesn't happen to picture abhi baki hai mere over to you for further questions In case you feel that uh, it will require some time to ask questions, we can wait for some time, as well as uh, you can write to uh, IST offline, or I don't know, uh, you can reach out. We'll be happy to answer. I have a question. Yeah, 
uh, as a startup company, how did you uh, started your marketing process? I mean, it's a new company and nobody knew about it. So, how to reach people? Okay. See, I'll tell you because this question is something you're still asking. When I started off, I didn't bother to ask anybody. I thought the product that I have made, customers will die to, you know, buy it. So you're at least two, three levels beyond me while you have thought of starting. And I really applaud you for at least thinking in this uh, arena. So first of all, it doesn't start with marketing strategy. It starts off with customer interviews. I mean, you know, um, I can go on and on um, uh, speaking about it, but I'll be precise onto it because we'll be running short of time. Uh, we'll start off with customer interviews. You know, when you have an idea, you still don't have the final product on your hand because your product takes some time to go into the proof of concept. From proof of concept, you go to an MVP, a minimum viable product. From a minimum viable product, you go into a product market fit, what we call as a PMF. And then it goes on to business model validation. These four steps are completed when, and after that, you kind of, you know, stand on your feet to just commence the business. So there's a lot of, it's like an iceberg. There's a lot of work before it. So initially, please don't spend any money. Just use a Facebook page, start blogging, start madly reaching out to customers and please 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 use linkedin please use linkedin be uh, you know be an absolute uh, pig skin to reach out to people even if you see sundar pichai don't hesitate to drop hi sundar how i wanted to talk to you i have this plan don't hesitate that he is sundar pichai just remember in yourself you have the capability of reaching out to bill gates or sundar pichai or anybody in this world if you have a great idea don't feel ashamed. So network within the, the basic customers you see around you, talk to people. It's like you do an evening fireside chat. It's like you do a small chai wala chat and just go and chat with customers for at least four, five months, six months. So, you know, whomever you meet, talk to them, learn about them, pitch your idea. Pitch your idea, not in a direct format, an indirect format, like a storytelling, tell a story. If something is like this, would you buy? Uh, how much would you give for it? You'll get an idea what customers are thinking. Try to segment your customers into teenagers, into 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and try to see where are you able to uh, you know, reach out. You might see that beyond 50 people are not buying my products. A lot of people beyond 50, my mom and dad uh, asks for my help when they're booking an Uber. So Uber and Amazon are not successful to them, but they are successful to other people of 50s and 60s. So you might be able to reach uh, up to 40s and then you find, okay, these are my customer segments. Then your marketing strategy come up that, okay, if like, you know, a classic example is Cred. Cred came up with this beautiful idea for us who have, we are actually 80s and 90s kids, but we have transformed into semi-millennials. We are not millennials, we're semi-millennials. So they want us to relive the dream of 90s where we had Anil Kapoor, Madhuri Rikshet, you know, Venkatesh Prasad, Javagal Srinath, Jackie Shroff, and all those people. And they are trying to gel with today's journey, today's everyday life. You feel connected, you feel laughing, you, you, you dance to that step of Anil Kapoor. So, you, but we are the people at our, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s who are using credit card. So this has been one of the most, I mean, at least to me, it has been one of the best campaigns after Google's ad campaign. So you need to think a lot about your customers before you go to marketing strategy. And once you try to go for marketing strategy, please go for blogging, use LinkedIn like anything, and go for Facebook pages. Don't even waste a single rupee on marketing. I remind you, do it organically for one year, two years, there's no hurry. There is no time limit. Forget that you have to buy a house at 30 and a car at 30 and uh, just go for it. You'll be able to do this homework. You, it'll be a self-realizable answer. How would you do the marketing strategy? But initially, please do it. You'll get followers. Try to make good content and for your try to make it visually perfect. You might not be able to go for a photo shoot for your product, 
get your uh, friend who might be getting you know clicking good photographs get him a uh, plate of biryani and ask him to shoot photographs for your product that will do you don't need to get the uber level uh, product in your in, in your kitty so go for cost less well, i have we have been i mean jeeta jagta example of this where we haven't spent any money on marketing it's only after we have grabbed some money from government or we have grabbed money from some investors we got you know help from iid bombay prantik has got help from iist shipur um, and the classic example is that when we were shooting for avran uh, it required a model and that model was uh, you know costing around 50 to 60000 so we didn't we didn't have that money so i became the model and i had to you know pose the the photographs that you see are all my hands uh, my t-shirt so i became the model for my own product and just removing the face so yeah means yeah you continue with this so then. yeah absolutely so think of those customers and free marketing strategy try to think on it you have to get everything for free even money from the market you should have it for free don't ever waste your father's money mother's money your money maximum you can waste little thousands of your own money but try to do business with others money simple and try to get them higher returns so costless marketing strategies any more questions one question is there in the chat box yeah yeah uh, okay okay here again again a question which is very close to my heart because i understood the meaning of this almost 5 6 years after my journey see you need to understand one thing that the support from government is there it's not that it's not there but um for you should understand that so we we as entrepreneurs make a mistake that we only feel that money is the only thing that we require as a support the rest we all know which is actually not uh for position of the support systems you have funding is a big thing i understand customer connects investor connects feedbacks from industry experts so for example when we started off we get into got into a program called plugin which is a joint uh, collaboration between uh, the department of science and technology iit bombay and intel corporation now as a common person i won't ever think of reaching out to the ceo of intel but here we were having lunch and dinner and everyday chats with the ceo of intel at that point of time with the uh, top management uh, of intel who were guiding us helping us think like the uh, you know ceos of intel we might be we, we were nobody there at that point of time so initially it this question has got many answers i assume that you just have an idea you because that's the worst case scenario you just have an idea with idea nobody is going to give you money you need to make it into a product you need to make it into a solution then you need need to approach customers sell it to them and then earn money so you need somebody support you need the government support the government has so first you need to classify your startup what is your idea on there are 10 8 to 10 categories of startup right now in india in which your startup goes i even assume that you have not registered a company don't register not required so what do you do is you classify your startup first whether my startup is an artificial intelligence startup a machine learning startup an iot startup a retail tech startup a saas based startup a fintech startup an edutech startup an agritech startup or a nanotech startup a robotic startup there are a healthcare startup so there are many many avenues you have to first decide okay i am catering to this problem say avran is helping uh, operating in the healthcare sector because it's in the healthcare sector now i will be searching for say i am i have made avran 
but I have not yet any support from anywhere. So what I'll think is, okay, Avrin is a disinfectant, so it will be mostly used in hospitals and uh, it will be mostly used in hotels and uh, maybe in houses, but because it's healthcare, I need to find out what are the programs that is available by the government and government tend to disburse these funds through a, uh, you know, in, in a network of institutes. It might be the IITs, the IIMs, a lot of DST registered incubation center. And what I would suggest is if you have an idea, please go on to Atal, uh, you know, the uh, Atal Innovation Mission website and see that whether it matches to any of the problem statement that is being stated out there. Because there's such a variety of problems, you'll feel somehow you're being connected to one of those problems and directly go and apply as an inventor. You don't need to be a startup out there. You can go for a program called Nidhi Prayas. Nidhi Prayas is uh, where you need not be a company. You can be just an entrepreneur. You can pitch your idea. And Nidhi Prayas has a uh, fund of up to 10 lakhs, which you can use to deliver, you know, create your proof of concept to a prototype or a minimum viable product. So you can go for these schemes, which do not require, uh, you know, an equity, which do not require any kind of commitment from your side, but you need to be passionate. You need to show that your idea or your prototype is to an extent where if you give me this 10 lakhs, I can take it up to a this level. You need to be clear in your mind, where could I get to with these 10 lakhs or with X amount of fund that I get from the government. But yes, there are ample number of schemes. I can help you out with that uh, to, you know, uh, with certain schemes um, where you can apply. If you're a registered company, there are even more schemes. If you're a biotech or a biomedical company, there is something known as bio ignition grant, big grant. And these are all disbursed um, through many, 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 many uh, institutions. And uh, you can use this money to convert your idea into a product. And you can also get support in terms of office space, in terms of Wi-Fi, in terms of beautiful, beautiful laboratories, yeah, in terms of the professors. You have no idea when you get into uh, you know, startups each day, you'll rediscover a sense of deja vu that, okay, I have myself uh, many times remembered Professor Subhashis Bhomik, a lot of nights will be designing some kind of robots. Some kind of things that he had taught in our dynamics of machines came back after 10 years or eight years into some kind of design that we had made. This will happen with everybody of you. Everybody of you will experience a sense of deja vu. So in, in this context, you can use all the professors, you can use the ecosystem, you can use the money to get more customers channels because these professors are prolific people who are connected to industry. And the amount of respect the professors or an academic ecosystem has got in the industry or the, uh, you know, the consortium uh, altogether, you as a novice entrepreneur, you, nobody knows you, but these people are there to help you and uh, you can take help of these government schemes that I told you and a lot more to uh, take your POC to a prototype or an minimum viable product or to the market. Good evening, sir. So um, thank you for your answer. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. After this, after your experience with the startup, is there something you would like to tell your past self that, oh, I wish I knew Microsoft project or I wish I was able to do Gantt chart in my bachelor's or something like that, which you could advise us before uh, we... Repeat, uh, something that I, I missed out that point. Can you please repeat it once more? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, like uh, after your experience with the startup, is there something you would like us as... Uh, people who are about to graduate, like the use of pro, uh, Microsoft project management or Gantt charts or any of these kind of business strategies, you think we can practice them while we are studies so that it could help us in the future when we try to go for startups? Okay. I would say, see, I, from my first stint in 2011 to 2017, I had tried out many things 
and I did it absolute unstructured in an unstructured manner. I was a very whimsical person. I used to, and I was, I was, I was pretty decently good in innovations. I got patents very easily. Um, I got a good number of patents, got uh, the Young Scientist Award at that point of time, and things were pretty good in terms of making product. And I was overconfident that product is going to give me a billion dollar business. Suddenly, I found out that I reinvented the wheel for these seven years. So it's after long, long terms of mistakes and a lot of ongoing mistakes, I found out that I we require a structure. But what I would suggest, probably uh, people are going to suggest you the other otherwise, I would suggest keep your mind open. Initially, don't go into any kind of these uh, project management, don't go into uh, the HR management, go into three, four things. Just get into the feel of startup, you know, get into what an entrepreneur means like, you know, stand in front of the mirror and feel like a CEO. It's very much required. It, it, it will make people laugh at you because you're a big zero at this point of time. But believe me, stand in front of the mirror, say that I'm the CEO stand in front of the mirror and say that I, I am responsible for a great idea that's going to change the world. So as a result, um, you will gradually find business model canvas, then how to pitch your idea, a thing that you need to learn. So you know, don't need to learn all the, uh, you know, all the chapters of MBA, all the chapters of engineering, all the chapters of people management, project management, psychology and everything. What you need to do is learn tits and bits of certain things and learn like a storybook, you know, don't pressurize yourself. Go to Coursera. There are a lot of audited course online. So free of cost, go through business model canvas, go through what is a startup, go through case studies of uh, different companies, what people have done, learn about people before you learn about, uh, you know, uh, subjects. I would say rather than subjects, learn case studies, go to YouTube, study, you know, Nike case study, go for uh, Coca-Cola case study, go for Maggie case study, go for Uber case study, Ola case study, Flip, uh, Flipkart, Amazon, um, Swiggy, as many case studies you want to get that, you know, how's the Josh Walla feeling inside your body. And then you take a step on to study the business model canvas, because you need to learn, nah? you, you need to get that knowledge imbibed in learn business model canvas, learn how to make a business model. And one thing that is going to help you learn many things at one go is learn how to make a presentation in front of investors, in front of customers. Why I'm saying this, making a presentation is the easiest crash course to know about your business. You will take a month to make a presentation, but each slide, will help you or will instigate you read a lot of journals. What Uber is doing, what Swiggy is doing, what Airbnb is doing, you know, what, what about XYZ are doing. And oh, then you go to a thought process. I need to do this for my business. And that is when you're, you know, you know, uh, uh, relating your business to all the points and nodes of your universe works. That is when you read this business model canvas and everything, and you understand you have to, you have to, you, you don't have to read you have to realize the thing from your within what's happening all around. So do it as a mixture of initially unstructured, just study like textbooks and then go for some structure, so do some courses of project management, uh, initially go for case studies, then again, do an unstructured three, four days of case study. Is the way you binge on Netflix, you binge series after series on Amazon Prime or Hoi Choi. Uh, you need to binge on case studies. You should not, you know, you starting from morning, your your you know your eyes should open with a case study, and at the night your eyes should close with a case study. And this should not come out of force. You should feel like doing it. If you have a date. When you're going to a date in an Uber, in those half an hour, you should feel like doing a case study. That's the that's the madness that should go within you when you know, you know, your parents are against you, 
though my parents were with me uh, but you you know your parents are afraid your you know your uh, family members are afraid you know your personal life has gone on a toss but you like feel like okay can i do one more case study you feel everybody is angry with you everybody will not understand your what you are going through in your whole day you are learning through courses your mom and dad will think oh my god i mean at this point of time what is the requirement for so many courses and everything but you will be on a self realization path where you will go go on doing courses you'll study you'll plan for your business you will plan for a new revenue stream you will plan for a new business model and it's a combination of structure and unstructure with which you will gradually go believe me that's the best way to learn stability and agility agility and stability step by step one step of agility which is unstructured reading and understanding then one step of stability a composed structured way of capturing everything into a canvas that you learned in the last steps then again a step of agility then again a step of stability and this is how you go on did i answer your question i don't know i i sometimes tend to side track but i try to give a feel of everything connected when you are approaching a you know problem yes sir thank you for your uh, input sir thank you um if there are uh, no more questions from the audience uh, we may please uh, proceed with the session uh, i would now like to invite uh, professor tonmay pal a uh, convener of a uh, convener institute innovation council iis shifkur to please give the vote of thanks thank you thank you uh, first of all i would like to thank our uh, uh, director mr patishar ji for uh, for creating a to start this kind of event to organize students to encourage the students to go and uh, try out some ideas for any initiative i wish to thank our dean our faculties or the students and staff and our iic team for making this kind of events uh, possible and uh, special thanks to our guest mr diptesh and mr prantik and most importantly that uh, i know prantik and uh, means he, he has been helping us for a long time and uh, he took our students uh, to to uh, get into the final uh, final round of nic uh, 2020 uh, this this kind of uh, events uh, means our 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 aim for these events are to uh, inspire the young minds that uh, there is a, a, an alternative path for uh as 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 um uh, opportunity lying that you, you don't need to have any job means in, it means instead of job you can start your own entrepreneurship it is not like that we are asking you to leave your job and go for entrepreneurship but uh, seeing these success stories uh, one can understand that uh, means there is always an alternative path is there and more more importantly a few days back we have i have a discussion with professor bhomi and uh, it 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 comes out that uh, means nowadays uh, most of this uh, means um, uh, high end equipments that we are importing from uh, foreign uh, nations that 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 cost us uh, several means lots of money and unless we have uh, such startups uh, or such uh, means uh, such companies they are producing those things it is it is very very difficult as a nation for us to sustain in the global economy for for example that uh, this uh, this uh, uh, medical devices like uh, those those who are uh, means uh, assisting uh, breathing assisting assisted breathing devices or uh, uh, just a few days back this uh, air force they bought uh, those uh, planes or some uh, helicopters from the foreign Uh, companies so unless uh, as a nation uh, uh, unless we we develop uh, the um, ecosystem for uh, startups and entrepreneurship means it will never be uh, self sufficient and will never be uh, able to compete in the global economy mm. 
So, uh, and, and uh, since uh, the, our institute, uh, the students of our institute, they have always been in the forefront of, of, of our nation's uh, uh, problem and is solving the nation's problem. So, our student has, has the capability, means uh, that uh, Diktesh and Prantik, they are both our students and they have uh, gone, uh, they have achieved the dream. So, uh, that, that our students are having the capability and uh, they just need the right uh, input that, that we are trying to provide. Uh, anyway, Ms. Uh, I wish to thank all of you for being here and uh, listening to uh, these problems and uh, thanks to uh, Diptesh and Prantik for presenting such a beautiful presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, there is one more thing that I thought I would share with you. Uh, there, is, there is a show uh, I, I have seen sometimes uh, that is called Shark Tank. I think uh, those kind of uh, shows, if you see that how to pitch your idea to the investor, so those kind of things that will that will be helpful uh, for, for our young investors, means uh, for our students. Anyway, so thank you all for thank you, sir. being with us. Yeah, this is something that please uh, anybody who is aspiring to be an entrepreneur, uh, the way you binge a series, you know, uh, any kind of series that you have, please binge on Shark Tank all the seasons and you'll find a great value. If you Shark feel, Tank is on Amazon Prime or Hotstar, right? Yes, I guess. I guess so. Please watch it. But I, like uh, anytime, please go through Shark Tank. You'll find certain, certain episodes on uh, YouTube. You can pick up from anywhere, but this is something that is going to change your way you think about business. Go on, use case studies of uh, companies who have been into Shark Tank and what they are doing right now. You will learn about Kevin O'Leary. You will uh, learn about um, you know, uh, Mark Cuban and uh, the best of the best of the investors uh, out there. Uh, thankfully, I happened to meet one of those in one of my presentation in Taiwan. Uh, and you learn, you learn what the world is doing. Believe me, India needs an Amazon. India needs a, a, a company like Google uh, to a great extent. It's it's true that we don't realize. It's true that uh, you know after we get our graduation or uh, you know post graduation degree, we feel that uh, we need to do a job. We need to get a package of 12, 18, 20, 50. Believe me, money will come one day. Money will be so, so, so a byproduct. You won't have to think how money will come. And that, you know, probably sometime I get to uh, interact with you guys again. We'll talk about the hockey stick curve and uh, the, or the J curve. The day money comes up, you don't have to think about it. No. Please be prepared to get, I mean, let's get one of the best companies in India, uh, which we can be proud of, which India can be proud of for the next upcoming decades. Thank you. Okay, so thank you all. We shall discuss. Uh, does anybody has anything to share? So we can end our program today. So thank you very thanks much. Thanks to Hitesh and uh, Antik for sharing your thoughts and ideas and experience. Okay. And I hope that uh, the students will be benefited. And this is not only what we are discussing today, this is not only the startup on the entrepreneur, even for your normal life, even if you join a job also. So all these challenges we will face. Yes. It's not like that. This is this challenge is only for the startup only. Even from the conventional type of job also, you have to face the same thing. Even if you join in a Tata state, if you join in Maruti, the same problem will come. In big companies also, they uh, use a word called entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. Are you able to take up that initiative and do something for delivering? So it's always, it's a way of life. Yeah, so a way of life.
so we should not think that all this program is only for this startup so those who have an inclination for going to the startup then they all join but uh, this lectures even for us also even for the faculty members also teachers also so is very important for all of us okay so thank you uh, dipesh and uh, prantik so a small memento on behalf of iist shipur will be uh, uh, will be dispatched to you by courier very soon okay thank so, you sir thank you sir thank so, you very much sir yeah so receive a token of appreciation from our side so thanks to all the participants thanks to all the students the faculty members present over here so now we can close the program yeah okay good night good night to all of you good night everyone good night.